so one more topic is left out in module 2 so uh, the topic is actually design thinking in a team environment so the last class what we did is that we discussed one situation and uh, uh, how you are responding that that what that's part that part i have tested it and uh, okay uh, nicely you have responded but still uh, we can discuss a few points on this design thinking in a team environment right Right. So till now, uh, what we discuss is that how to do the design thinking approach. What are the phases in that? That empathize phase, define phase, ideate, prototype, and test phase. And then we discussed about uh, uh, what kind of thinking is possible: divergent uh, thinking and convergent thinking, and uh, how to convert the divergent uh, thinking to a convergent thinking. Right? How to attain the con convergent uh, thinking? That is what we discussed in the previous classes. Right. So today uh, we'll be discussing about design thinking in a team environment. Right. So as I discussed in the uh, last class, so design thinking in a team environment means, uh, say, if you want to get a best uh, or a creative solutions, right? We need to get more uh, uh, solution for a particular idea, right? So if if you are giving a problem, if you are actually delivering a problem to the team, right? So what the team will do? each individual or each member in a team right they will come up with a uh, solution right so uh, by discussing with uh, each and every uh, team members right we can identify which is the best solution right like that we can able to pick it out okay so in order to get best and creative solution design thinking process is generally performed as a team activity right as a team activity so while uh, doing the team activity, we'll be facing some problems, right? So how to tackle the problems, how to overcome the problems, so how to solve the problems that we are going to discuss in this class, okay? So what the team activity will do, team will be doing the identifying multiple solutions. Each individual in the team, right? They will be taking, they, I mean, they'll be bringing out multiple solutions. We have to pick out the best solution from that, okay? Fine. So, what actually happens in the team environment? Every member may raise their own ideas and solutions. That is what I told. So, each and every individual or a member inside a team, right, they will be having their own ideas and solutions. They will tell their own ideas and solutions. The team will analyze it, right? What kind of analysis they will be doing? They will be doing, they will be identifying the advantages and disadvantages or say pros and cons of each solution uh, and then finalize the best suitable solution right and uh, uh, the, the third thing is but during the uh, design thinking uh, as a team activity right conflicts occurs say uh, each and every member right, they'll be thinking that their idea is the best idea when compared to other ideas right so such a kind of conflicts may occur or say somebody else will like say um, uh, pointing out uh, issues that you are telling a bad idea it's not a good idea right this idea won't work this particular solution won't work, work for this problem so likewise we'll uh, I, the, the team members will be uh, having some conflicts right so it is very important to resolve those conflicts right if such conflicts occurs we have to resolve it and finally we have to come to an agreement that this is the perfect solution right so such a kind of uh, agreement right uh, or such kind of uh, uh, what is that uh, decision making right will make or will resolve these conflicts okay so how to do that that is what we are going to discuss so we are going to discuss the third point in detail throughout this particular uh, class right how to resolve the conflicts how to resolve the conflicts so before uh, uh, resolving the conflicts right first you have to uh, we, we should know about what are the characteristics of a team right what are what are the characteristics of an effective team right so let us discuss that and then we'll move on to the next next part so team goals are as important as individual goals so for example we are calling for a meeting right we are calling for a meeting right and that meeting should have a goal that you can call it as a team goal, right? And that team goal should actually reflect the individual goals, right? That is why team goals are 
as important as individual goals so what the individual individual will be doing he will be working on the particular goal is it right so team goals are as important as individual goals the team understand the goals and is committed to achieving them that is a very important objective right team sh should understand the goals and it should be committed right they should have the responsibility right to achieving the particular goal right and what are the things you have to do the people feel comfortable talking risks right are taking risks right so whenever we are conducting whenever there's a meeting right so people should feel that uh, 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 taking risk uh, is is a comfortable one right no need to worry about say if you if you're telling this idea it will be a risk right they will ask us to do it so some all these things we should not take into account you have to freely tell the uh, solutions right um, uh, you should be open to uh, discuss any kind of solutions right that is uh, taking this is not an issue any kind of risk a team member or a team will be able to take it so such a kind of uh, uh, characteristics should be there in the team right so that is why trust replaces fear if you are telling a solution other people in the team right they will help to uh, work as a party i mean help to help to complete the project with the help of the solution right that is trust replaces fear and respect collaboration and open mindedness are prevalent right and team members communicate readily diversity of opinions is encouraged right so if one person is telling a uh, solution right and opinions will be differ right so the the same solution uh, uh, will be uh, what is that he, he won't be i mean others won't be agreeing their particular opinions so that that kind of opinions should be encouraged it is an what is that it is an uh, uh, healthy uh, discussion right it will be a healthy discussion so decisions are made by uh, consensus consensus and have the acceptance and support of the members of the team right so decisions should be made with all the uh, uh, team members agreement right so simply a individual decision should not happen a decision should be made by agreeing with all the team members we have to get the opinion from all the team members from that only we have to make the decision right so uh, then only you will be getting the support right so uh, the team members will be giving the support so this is what your characteristics of an effective team right fine so now we have the team uh, we have the team so uh, you, during that uh, what is that meeting right as i told uh, conflicts occurs right so how to resolve the conflicts there are three steps first step is prepare the resolution right prepare the resolution and then understand the situation then reach the agreement right these three steps are uh, used for resolving the conflict so what do you mean by preparing the resolution right fine while discussing the team while discussing the team right team environment suddenly a conflict occurs so what you have to do first thing is you should each team member should acknowledge the conflict right Uh, that each team member or the team leader should acknowledge the conflict conflict okay this is this is right i, I mean you know, what you are telling is correct this is this is a conflict this is a issue right like this we have to acknowledge it we have to agree it first that is the tendency is for the people to ignore the first signs of conflict per, perhaps as it seems tribal or is difficult to differentiate from the normal healthy debate see you should not ignore it first see when 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 a conflict occurs first thing is you should agree it right first you should you should acknowledge it and the second thing is you should not ignore it right we have to discuss with others uh, we have to we have to get the we have to make a healthy debate on this particular conflict right and then we have to come to a conclusion okay this conflict will not affect the particular idea solution right will not affect the solution like this you have to come to a conclusion where all the team members should agree right so we should not ignore any conflict right we have to make it as a healthy debate that we can try on right yes any doubts any conflict occurs no right fine okay fine so now uh, the second uh, point is that discuss the impact right uh, what is the impact of the particular conflict 
as a team discuss the discuss the impact uh, discuss impact the uh, impact the conflict is having on team dy dynamics and performance say if such a conflict occurs what what actually the team leader or the team member has to do is that the team dy dynamics should not be uh, reduced the team performance should not be reduced we have to discuss the impact of it right and then the third point is agree to cooperative process so everyone involved must agree to uh, cooperate into resolve the conflict so everybody should be in a position each every each and every team member should be in a position to resolve the conflict right that is what agree to a cooperative process say for example say this means putting the team first and may involve setting aside your opinion see uh, uh, each member should write think about okay team is very important opinion should be the next right everybody is having their own opinions so we should not uh, what impose opinion into the team because team is important team is first right so agree to a cooperative process we should each and every team member should be uh, agreeing to a cooperative process right and the final thing is agree to communicate right so the thing is that the most important thing throughout the research process is everyone to keep communicate so everybody should communicate see if 10 members are there only five are actually speaking and the remaining five are not speaking then it's no useful of it you won't be able to solve the conflict right those five people who are, who are making the conflict then they will be keep on speaking so everybody should communicate so everybody inside the team should communicate agree to communicate so this is what the preparation of uh, resolution preparing the resolution right the next is understand the situation like say uh, uh, if a clarity occurs if a, uh, if a uh, what is that a conflict occurs for example if a conflict occurs we have to understand the situation of that conflict disagreement why this particular conflict happens right so what are the uh, what are the uh, uh, what is that uh, which position we have actually um, uh, facing this conflict so we have to clarify that right we have to clarify this so first thing is you have to clarify the position right and the next step is right list the facts assumptions and beliefs underlying each so what each group or person believe say uh, if a person is actually creating a uh, conflict right so what he is actually believing that we have to understood right that we have to understood so what do they value so whether that particular conflict right whether it is having some value or not what information are they using as a basis for these beliefs so they will be having some proofs right simply they won't take the make the conflict they will be having some proofs so what information are they using as a basis for these beliefs and what decision making criteria and process have they employed say they have uh, decided something and they have raised the conflict right so what decision making criteria they have so all these things we have to understand right so we, uh, we have to list out the facts each and every facts should be understood clearly right fine even then what happens right even then the conflict occurs like the conflict is actually rising so what we have to do divide the whole team team into small small groups this is a this is a very uh, what is that um, raja tandra right uh, it is like say if if the problem arises in the team right uh, the immediate solution is divide the team and then conquer it right so divide the team in the sense right convert the team into smaller smaller groups right and ask them to find the solution for it right so those smaller groups right what they will do is that they will discuss among themselves they will find a, a solution and then they can reassemble it that is convene back as a team after reassembling it right what the, what what happens right the conflict size will get reduced because one, when you are converting that into smaller groups they will be discussing and they will come to a conclusion and when they assemble back what uh, happens is that uh, each group will be having one particular uh, point right the conflict size will get reduced automatically right so from that we can able to say come to a conclusion or we can able to agree uh, to a particular uh, conclusion that this conflict is not going to uh, affect the team right so a uh, simple uh, thing is first thing is you have to clarify the position right and you have to understand the facts what are the facts uh, uh, in which the conflict occurs you have to understand that even then if we if we are not able to solve it right what we can do is that 
divide the whole team into small groups and let them discuss first and then come to a conclusion and then again uh, reassemble and from that right what you do is that you uh, what is that um, find, uh, solve the issues and facts right uh, and uh, come to a agreement right so this is what understanding the situation right so previously what prepare the resolution right acknowledge it right once it is acknowledged once once it is agreed what you have to do is you have to understand the situation why that conflict occurs right by using clarifying position listing out the facts right uh, dividing the uh, group uh, i mean team into smaller groups and then identify it this is what understand the situation right understand the problem or understand the conflict clearly okay once it is understand right what you have to do is you can reach an agreement that is okay this is the conflict occurs and this is the solution right so this is what the solution we can do for this conflict right likewise we can give we can give a suggestion and it should be should not be an individual uh, decision making right that agreement should be agreed with each member inside the team then 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 he will be the good team leader right if if a team leader is actually uh, imposing something into the team then it means that what uh, he is actually uh, what is that it is a dictatorship it is a dictatorship right he is dictating something to the team so it is he is not a good team leader so the team leader should like getting all the uh, what is that agreement from each team member right each team member should agree the solution okay so now that all parties understand the others position and the team must decide what decision are course to take with the fact and assumption considered it is easy to see the best of action and reach to an agreement okay this is what the solution for this conflict that is the, that that solution or that agreement should be done by each team member this is what we are uh, reaching the agreement right so these three are the steps to resolve the conflicts these three are the steps to resolve the conflicts right fine and uh, another uh, solution to resolve the conflict right preventing the conflict itself right so before assembling the team right before uh, uh, before uh, participating in the team environment what you can do is that you can prepare right so uh, what are the possible solutions the team members can do okay, team members can uh, bring out right what are the possible conflicts occurs that you can just predict right that can predict that you can that you can have some idea about it and then if you are attending the uh, what is that Uh, 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 what is that? Uh, the team uh, meeting, right? So he, that, that in that case, right, we can able to prevent the conflicts. That is one point. Now another point is that dealing with conflict immediately. So if we already prepare, we can able to deal the conflict immediately. Okay, and uh, uh, if people have issues, they need to be expressed immediately, right? This is also possible. If we if we uh, 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 previously if you are identifying the issues uh, right if you are preparing the issues uh, uh, i mean if you are understanding the issues previously right before attending the meeting we can able to right express immediately the next important thing is practicing clear communication articulate throughout and ideas clearly articulate the thoughts and ideas clearly right so you have to communicate it very clearly so to avoid conflicts practicing active listening say uh, the team team uh, meeting is there team members are actually speaking so one team member is telling that okay uh, yeah, he is uh, raising a conflict so what the uh, team leader should do for example the team leader should rephrase the uh, conflict what the team member is telling that right? he can rephrase it okay is is, 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 it, is it what you are telling right this is what you are telling right it, it means that you are acknowledging and you are rephrasing the Uh, content which the team member is telling right so you are paraphrasing it the um, uh, conflict you are rephrasing the conflict so that is you are listening very clearly so the team member you feel that okay the team leader is actually listening right so and you can clarify it by asking okay are you asking this are are you can ask question are you asking are you telling about this particular part right likewise you can 
do an active listening to prevent the conflicts practicing identifying assumptions right asking yourself why on a regular basis so every time you have to ask why right so that we can create assumptions identifying assumptions right so likewise this has few points you can able to understand it clearly you can just have a look on it right and you can come to a conclusion that you can able to prevent the conflicts before attending the i mean before uh, the conflict arises you can prevent the conflicts right so and do not look for the blame you should not uh, blame you should not try to blame the others right say uh, uh, if if ten members are there in the team so one should not blame others right so you should avoid blaming things right and demonstrating respect if a situation escalates if one member one one team member is is, uh, is uh, shouting like anything escalates right take a break just wait for that work, uh, a particular person to come down right he will be uh, speaking in a emotional way right so you just wait take a break and wait for the person to come down right that is what you are demonstrating respect so in this way you can able to prevent the conflicts okay fine so uh, that's all about uh, the team uh, discussions right so we have discussed it I discussed all the uh, design thinking approach right so uh, let me do one thing i'll give you a, a problem right not now maybe tomorrow right we will we'll try to solve that problem and we'll move on to the third module right Let me stop the recording.